Here we go. Louis Dean, you are a novelist. You have published four novels, and a uh, legend says that you are working on your fifth, but you are also the founder of an amazing website called the Novelry, which is a creative writing school that helps writer com writers complete their novels. Louis, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much for having me, Alan. It's lovely to meet you. So I, I have heard about your website because I have one or two friends who aspire to be writers. I think everyone wants to be a writer. It's just that some people are too afraid to admit it. But I, I think everyone has a little bit of a writer in them. And, and so a friend of mine pointed out your website. And I said, wow, what an amazing website. I wonder who is behind it. And then that's how I find out, I find out about you. So... I wonder if we could start by you telling us a little bit about your background. You were somebody else before you became a novelist. So can you tell us about that person? Yeah, sure. I think you really put your finger on it when you said that everybody's got a bit of a writer in them, um, but they're afraid to admit it. And um, that was definitely my case. Um, I loved reading and almost all of my writers um, that come to the novelry loved reading as a child and always wanted to write books. Um, they always say that. My typical writer has been writing a novel for six years. Um, and it's kind of in the closet, you know, about it. Um, I was just the same. Um, so I um, wrote um, very badly um, and didn't know what to do about making my writing better apart from reading more and more. So I just read Chekhov, uh, Raymond Carver and Graham Greene almost on loop for a few years to try and improve my writing and that helped. Um, but I would never admit, I would never admit that I was going to be a writer or that I could write or wanted to write because I thought that to be a writer, you had to be two things. One was a very good person and, and the second was clever. And I didn't think I met the test on either of those. Um, so, <laughs> so I disqualified myself automatically. But finally, I got to the point where I thought, look, I love reading. I love the craft of writing. Even if I'm no good at it, I'm going to study the craft because I love it. Um, and that's how I went on. And um, I wrote two novels that weren't very good. And I just put them in the drawer because I knew they weren't good. Um, and then my third novel, I felt, you know, that I was getting somewhere and it was better. And that was the first novel of mine that got published. Okay, um, but so that was the long way. Before you were a writer, you uh, used to be another, you had another life. What do you study? How do you pay the bills? And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, well, uh, I left school uh, and went to Cambridge University where I read history which um, I joined, of course, history is all about storytelling. Um, you know, they say that the stories belong to the conquerors. Um, so uh, I studied history and then I went into commerce. I worked for a huge corporation called Unilever. Um, and, um, and I love the storytelling of consumer products. Um, and um, I worked in tea, um, a very famous tea brand in England called Brookbond Tea. Um, and I worked there for about three years, went into advertising in London, from advertising in London, went to advertising in Hong Kong, then New York. Um, and when I was in New York, um, I had my first child um, and I worked and it became difficult to balance a job with raising a son. Um, and um, luckily for me, my small advertising agency that I started went bankrupt in the most spectacular way. So out of my failure, <laughs> um, I was able to actually uh, find a way of freelance working and writing. Um, so, you know, often the things that happen to us come from spectacular failures. Yeah, we don't want to get into that. <laughs> we, we, we can end up glorifying failures one after another one. And <laughs> there, there had to be a turning point in which the failures turn into success. <laughs> Okay, so you are doing all this work and you have this curiosity about writing. You wrote two novels that you consider to be a failure. Uh, what happened on the third novel that you consider a success? You are doing that while working a full-time or you are not longer working a full-time job? 
I was working part time, but by that point, um, I were, had two children um, and I was pregnant with my third and I was just writing in the mornings. And I knew by then that I had discipline and process. And I knew that for a writer, discipline and process is as important as inspiration. And my process was that I read every evening before I went to sleep and I got up and I wrote every morning without fail. I didn't miss a day, even when the writing wasn't good, I was still considering and staying in touch with my novel. So for me, that was what made the big difference. It was just turning up every day to that novel. Um, and I loved the characters. Um, and I had a hell of a problem at the heart of the story. Um, and that to me, those seem to be the ingredients really for a novel that's gonna work. A hell of a problem for your main character, characters you love, and then the author's gotta show up and write it. Right, right. And you know, for a writer who's not a good writer, the best thing to do is to get the bad writing out of their system. So do all that bad writing every day until you run out of bad things to write about. And then <laughs> <laughs> eventually- That's a brilliant way of putting it. Brilliant. And it's so true. It was very true in my case. I had so many bad things to write about. It took me about five years to get them out of my system. That that's a brilliant way of putting it. Okay. Uh, and at one moment, writing became a full-time profession. And what was the internal dialogue of inside of your head of making this your career because one thing is to write for pleasure and the other thing is be when your art becomes the vehicle that you use to pay your bills yeah um well uh i was quite well placed because i was able to continue working in advertising a little bit but actually my first novel did quite well but my second novel did well as well so um, I had enough finance from both of those two novels because they sold worldwide. So I was able to carry on and write my third and fourth with an advance from Penguin um, in the UK and the US as well. So that saw me through until about 2010. Um, and then I needed to write more novels, obviously, to have money coming in. But life was different. My kids were older. And I just felt a little bit like Hemingway says, the well was dry. I didn't really know what I was going to write about next. So I started another business, a pottery business, um, because I wanted a change. I'd been writing for about 10 years. I'd written four novels and I wanted a bit of a change. Um, so I had a pottery business for a short while, which did OK. Um, and then I worked in a school for a little bit and I taught writing. Um, for Arvon retreats. So I would go away and teach writers and I really loved it. I was really surprised how much I loved teaching. Um, and um, so uh, after a few more years of all of that, by 2017, it just occurred to me that writing was the only profession, the only art that people think they've got to do on their own without anyone else being involved. And it's false because when we get an agent and when we get published, we work with other people on the material. So I thought if there was a way to bring that collaborative effort into the process of writing a book earlier, certainly I knew in my case, it would have helped me get published earlier than I did if I'd have had someone to go to a mentor, if I could have done an apprenticeship. Um, everybody else does apprenticeships every craft professional trade, why not writing? Um, and so that's why I thought about starting the novelry, mostly for company, because I was feeling pretty lonely at that point, and I'd had lost my confidence in my writing. Um, and, um, and it just took off and we've had so much fun along the way. Okay, and can you describe the novelry? How does it work? What is it? Uh, yeah, for someone who hears this, uh, name for the first time today. What are we talking about? Well, it's a professional writing school um, in the sense we do take beginners. We have a lot of beginners, but we take we have a professional attitude. We want our writers to be published. We want the very best for them. So we accompany writers all the way through, even before they've got the idea for the book. 
we have a course that helps people look into their childhood and look at big stories so the best sellers of all time and match their life experience with big stories and how they work and come up with a unique and original idea from that we take them through writing the novel and we take them all the way through to our literary agency partners desks to get them deals publishing deals um, and um, it's a, so there's a course structure, so they get daily lessons, but they also have an author, myself, and there are three others authors too, um, and we get big famous author guests who come along too, and they are with the writers, so it's a proper apprenticeship where you've got someone who's on your side, who wants the best for you, and who believes in you and what you're doing, and is there as an old friend that you can talk through ideas with. Wow, this, this is amazing. Okay, so this is an amazing idea. Uh, I saw the website. I was impressed. Uh, I assume you are not a website developer. <laughs> you, you hire someone. So can you tell us about the development? You told us where you got the idea, but the development of the website and also you have a membership. Uh, it's a membership uh, website as well. And I think it takes not only knowing about the milieu, but also uh, knowing about the business sense. How do you put it together? Did someone help you with that? Or do you have all these ideas already brewing? No, in your head? Um, my background is advertising and marketing. So I love the business side of things. And that's quite rare for a writer. So, you know, that's fortunate in my um, situation. I love it. Um, I had developed the website myself, but I used a platform called Kajabi, um, which has been great. Um, I'm very impressed with them. Um, and then all the design elements I've done um, and everything, all the membership and all the sort of web hooks that link things up to other sites and other it's basically um, patched together. You know, there are, I've got all the links in place to link us to a booking program. We have a separate members website that's a little bit like a Facebook type of thing. Um, so it's all sort of linked together qu quite seamlessly. Um, and, um, and I love looking after the advertising and creative work for the website. I find that really pleasurable. Well, okay, so I have to tell you, I was already impressed with the work that you're doing, but now I, I assume 100% that someone took you by the hand and, talk, and told you, uh, Luis, this is how it's done in the business world and, and that you follow through because I, I thought it was extremely well done. Uh, okay, so moving along from there, I see that you have a, a, a very popular course, which is the, the year in a, what is it, a book in a year course. And can you tell us more about it? If let's say someone listens to this episode and I say, wow, I always wanted to write and maybe I'm going to consider this. How would that work? Yeah, so that's our most popular program. Um, so you just show up. The minute you sign up, you're a writer. And that's what we do. We drop people into the life of a writer straight away. Um, you have, you come in on the course and you have two months to work through your idea with the course I was telling you about before, which is called the classic course. So that helps you look at your own passions and experience. And then we show you how big best-selling stories work. So you put together the idea for a story. Then you come to mama, you come to your tutor or your author teacher, um, and we look at what you've got and we shape it into a story shape together. And then on our Zoom session, um, we high five the story outline, and then we guide you every single day for three months through the writing of that novel to the end. So you'll have your novel within the first half year easily of the book in the year. Then we get you to take a month off, off. During that month, we make you read, read, read great books. So you raise your ambition again. You come back to us and we revise the story because not many people understand that no, uh, no novels are published on a first draft. 
novels are published on second, third, fourth, 34th drafts. It's all in the rewriting. So we rewrite with you. We show you how we're going to make this into a commercial, sellable novel. I want my writers to be sold and to do very, very well um, because I love business and there's a commercial side of me. I'm not the kind of writer who likes what we call purple prose, long-winded flowery sentences, there's no story. We need to have a story because readers want stories. So we are completely focused on the story at the Novelry and that makes us very different. And we're focused on getting you published. So it's all about us working side by side, sleeves rolled up, on the text, on the manuscript at that point, and then I submit to my agents within that year on behalf of the writers. Um, and so we send out to our global agents, we pitch it to them, um, and hopefully, you know, we have a home run at that point. Wow. Another thing that impressed me a little bit, well, not a, a lot, was that you invite uh, other authors to give workshops. So I guess this happens once you are a member, you have these regular workshops going on and people come and teach whatever techniques to do this and the other thing? Yeah, they're lovely. We've loved, when um, the pandemic hit, I knew I needed to look after my writers and give them a lot more. So we had, um, we have a wonderful writer called Louise Doughty who wrote Apple Tree Yard, that's a very famous bestseller. And she started doing monthly masterclasses that were long, an hour and a half. My writers loved them. Um, and so then we brought in more and more writers. So we have quite famous writers. Paula Hawkins wrote The Girl on a Train, David Nichols one day, um, lots and lots of writers. We have at least two a month. We also do two team sessions a month, and then we do two story clinics a month. So my writers have a full program of events, and that's what I mean by when you join us, you're a writer. It, we call it a full body immersion. We drop you into the life of a writer writing. So you may have a day job and you may have kids, but your heart and mind is going to be in your novel. <laughs> wow. And that's where we want it. And uh, how does it work? Uh, it says uh, you have a group that is live 24-7. So it's almost, is it like a Facebook group that you can just go in and just chat? or And is it on Facebook or is it on a different platform? Great question. We just moved off of Facebook. Um, I was getting more and more worried about it. It's very distracting for writers who actually want that kind of immersion and don't want to be being sold lots of things through lots of ads. So now we have our alternative, which has pretty much all the facilities of Facebook. Um, I had to get GIFs in there because my writers love to add GIFs to their posts. <laughs> um, so um, we have our own and it's open 24-7 because our members are in Alaska and in Australia. They're worldwide. So it's a conversation all the time about you, your novels, books that you're reading. And there we have, it's, it's a live um, center. So we have um, live sessions go into there. So you can see an author talking live within the group, for instance. Wow. And uh, for the workshop, when you invite uh, authors, I guess they come live at a particular London time and then everyone else around the world try to uh, adjust their schedules in order to be present or do you provide recordings afterwards? Yeah, we have catch up TV, we call it. Um, so everything's recorded so that our members can watch them when they want. Um, it's lovely to be live because you can ask your own questions and we try and change the time zone timings so that we can, you know, people who are out in the Far East can watch and people are in America, we try to change things around, but we always record it so that they can watch them. And during Christmas, some of my writers have just been watching them like box sets. So that's been lovely. Wow, I feel curious myself. Uh, so, and how, um, in the business sense, how much have your business grown, uh, if, if that's okay for you to share? sure i mean we've doubled every year so from um 2017 to now we double we've doubled each year in terms of numbers of members and revenues so 
it's growing rapidly, very, very healthy, very nice, but it's very important because I'm a writer, I want my time more than I'm ever gonna really want money, I want time. So for me, there's gotta be a balance because I want to look after my writers and really care for them. So our growth is lovely um, and very encouraging. It shows that we're doing what we're doing really well. Um, but um, we are not so aggressive about growth because I want to look after all of my writers and I want time to write. Yeah. So, you know, we are first and foremost about writing. Wow, this is, uh, I, I think I ran out of questions. I think uh, you have given us a complete picture of yourself, your writing career and this amazing website. Is there anything else that maybe I neglected to ask you? I can't think of anything. Um, no, it's lovely talking to you. Are you going to come and write a novel with us, Ellen? <laughs> I'm thinking more of a nonfiction, uh, but maybe, maybe, who knows, or a memoir. Oh, oh one last thing, uh, connecting um, writers with literary agents. How you say that you do that? How, how does that work? Uh, that's the best bit of my job. Um, so um, we are lucky in that we have friendships with really lovely literary agents and I talk to them fairly regularly about what they're looking for. So when a writer comes to me at the beginning of the book in a year, I know what kind of books I can sell to my agent. So I can really help the writer to make sure it's commercial. Um, and then at the very end of their year, when we've done all the hard work on the book, I kind of... I'm a bit naughty, I tease my agents. I'll say a month before I'm gonna send it to them. I've got this book in, la 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 la, it's wonderful because of this. Now I can boast and brag on behalf of my writers in a way that they can't when they pitch to agents. So I'll boast and brag and tell them why they need to sign up this writer and what's so special about it. Um, and we only ask of our, we have no financial arrangement with our agents. We don't take commissions, nothing. We want a happy ending for everybody. I want my writers to find the right agent for them because it's a working partnership. Um, but what we do do is um, we have our chat with the agents, have our chat with the writers, make sure it's a good match. Um, and then we send the manuscript to the agents and we ask our agents to come back with us in two weeks. Most writers, when they send work to agents, don't hear from them again, or it takes many months. So when they come to the novel read, they know they're gonna get an answer. And if it's not a yes, at least they'll know why, because we ask the agents, what was it about it? Which means we can go again, you know? Right, I have a friend and this friend tells me, I just want to write a book. I don't care if it ever hits the bookshelf or if it's ever sold on any stores. I just want to accomplish writing a book. So uh, do you have writers like that, that they just want the process of writing a book and they can care less whether it's sold in, in bookstores or not? And secondly, what is the success rate from someone who starts today to being published on, on a year from now? Yeah, sure. Um, well, let's take the first thing about, um, you know, whether you're not worried about being published. I would say 20% of my writers aren't worried. They want the achievement of finishing a novel. We don't mind what you want. We're here to support you. So our very first session with our writer begins with one question. What do you want? And when we know what that is, we can focus and support them. So some writers will say, look, I'm not looking for a mainstream commercial publishing deal. I'm doing things really differently. I'm a literary stylist. And I'll say to them, good, that's fine with me. I'm happy, whatever it is, here to support you. I don't mind. So we're fine with that, you know, and everyone will achieve. Um, they will finish a novel for sure. No one gets left behind. You know, we look after you and watch you all the way. So that's not an issue for us. We're more than happy. Um, on your second question about the success rate, um, that I've got to be very honest about. Um, I would say that, well, for a start, when we pitch to agents, we have a success rate of about 75%. But that's misleading because we don't pitch all novels. Mm -hmm. We work our writers very, very hard um, and we will only pitch them when they're ready. So if the work isn't ready, we're not going to let our writer fail. 
and have a bad experience. So we will keep sending our writer back, but they will have our guidance and understand exactly why it's not ready. So from the start, say you have 100 people at the beginning of the course, at the beginning of a book in the year, I would say 80 to 90% will finish. They will complete a book in the year. Of those, I would say maybe 50% um, of the book is done and ready. Most people feel they need longer, especially if they're writing fantasy, um, and they can go on for longer with us too. That's all fine. Um, and then I would say, you know, of those that we pitch, it's about 75%, but we're very tough and selective about what we pitch. And that's the honest truth. Wow. Okay. So uh, the last question, can you tell us one more time the name of your website and where can people follow you and find out everything there is to know about, about this amazing website? Yeah, thanks, Alan. So we're at thenovelry.com, T-H-E-N-O-V-E-L-R-Y.com. Um, and you can find out everything on the website and opt into our weekly Sunday blog, we have lots of famous best-selling authors who write a weekly blog for us, for, for our writers. So, and that's free. So that's well worth signing up for. And we're on Instagram and Twitter, of course, at The Novel Read too. Louis, thank you so much for joining us. You're so welcome. It's so great to see you. Take care, Alan. <laughs>